So I'm back with another Genshin Impact video, but this time I'm going to be looking at artifact drop rates. As per usual, I'll be going fast and time sense are in the description below. Let's get started. Now, I know there are multiple sources like Jinjinx who have done a lot of math to show just how difficult it is to get a perfect artifact. This typically involves getting the right main stat and four good subsets, but I like to focus on the more achievable things. Many of us aren't actively going for one of these so-called perfect artifacts. Personally, I try to get at least three good subsets with the proper main stack. Any more is just bonus, and any less is taking a massive risk with your artifact fodder and Mora, as you realize that you've kept upgrading your defense percent stat five times in a row. So, I decided to do the math to see just how difficult it is to get what I consider to be a decent artifact. Like last time, I need to go through the assumptions and notes first. Assumption 1. All artifacts are 5-star artifacts with 4 substats. This is because upgrading an artifact without that 4 substat lowers the maximum amount of stat upgrades you can get, and this is also a relatively easy thing to check for without spending any additional resources. Assumption 2. We are assuming that all stat distributions are equal. I actually don't think this is true at all, given the overwhelming anecdotal evidence that artifacts seem to favor HP% percent and defense percent main stats. There's even a theory that artifact main stats are subcategorized into 4 subcategories, at least in regards to goblets. Assumption 3. The goblet is running an elemental damage bonus or a physical damage bonus, while the headpiece is running crit rate or crit damage, depending on which stat you need. This video is primarily focused on DPS unit artifacts, since most units are running with damage as their focus. You have your support DPS and you have your regular DPS. Of course, there will be support units like Barbara or off-meta stat units like Noelle, which require very different gearing and thus have different chances of getting what they consider desirable artifacts. Like with Barbara, you want a lot of HP, and with Noelle, you want a lot of defense, and it's going to be very different. Assumption 4. The 4 best substats are attack percent, flat attack, crit rate, and crit damage. Again, DPS focus, so DPS stats are preferable. Energy recharge, at least for me, is the 5th most desirable stat, so in cases where you can't get one of those 4 best substats, energy recharge will take its place, but at a less priority. Assumption 5. The DPS unit is going for either a 4-piece set or two 2-piece sets. This is because this typically gives us the most bonus without having to sacrifice too much. It also allows us to have our goblet be from any set because it's hard enough to get the right main stat and subsets for the goblet already, considering it has all those elemental damage bonuses and the physical damage bonuses. And that's about it for assumptions and such. Now we can get to the real math. And unlike last video, we'll be working with probability. Now, probability is something a lot of people don't really understand and kind of extrapolate too far. Remember, just because the probability is incredibly low doesn't mean nobody will ever get it, just that it's incredibly unlikely, especially considering that this game has been downloaded over 70 million times. It's almost guaranteed that someone somewhere will have achieved something that according to probability should have been near impossible for any one person. So let's get into it. The first RNG layer we have to go through is, for any artifact is getting the right main stat. And this is where the problems start, which is incredible, right? The math hasn't even started and we already have problems. We have five different artifacts. Flower, Feather, Timepiece, Goblet, and Headpiece. All have different pools of main stats that they can roll from. Flowers and Feathers both only have one main stat they can roll, Flat HP and Flat Attack, respectively. Timepieces have five different stats, Goblets have a whopping 11 different stats, and that's not even counting the Dendro damage bonus that's not out yet, and Headpieces have seven different stats. For the Timepiece, Goblet, and Headpiece, there's only one stat we want out of them each. For the Timepiece, we want Attack Percent, again DPS Focus. For the Goblet, we want our specific Elemental Damage Bonus or Physical Damage Bonus, so one of these will be desirable for any given unit. And for the Headpiece, we want either Crit Rate or Crit Damage. Typically, a unit would lean one way or another, like with Kuching or Diluc, both of whom have Crit Stats under Secondary Stat. Not to mention, the better weapons also end up giving some kind of Crit Stat for the Secondary, at least the Battle Pass weapons do. But for those who want it, I will also be going over the chances of a Headpiece where you are okay with getting either Crit Rate or Crit Damage. But it should become apparent that it doesn't really matter whether you're looking for one or are fine with either. So, right now, our probability states that we have a 1 out of 1 chance of getting the main stat on the flower, 1 out of 1 chance of getting the main stat on the feather, 1 out of 5 chance for timepiece, 1 out of 11 for our goblet, and 1 out of 7 for our headpiece. 2 out of 7 if you don't really care if you get crit rate or crit damage. But now we have to factor in the substats. Let's assume that we get the main stat we're looking for. For each artifact, there's yet another altered pool for most of the artifacts. There are only 10 different substats you can get. HP, attack, defense, HP percent, attack percent, defense percent, elemental mastery, energy recharge, crit rate, and crit damage. Since you can't have the same main and substat on the same artifact, every artifact except the goblet only has a pool of 9 substats that you can pull from since we're going for that special stat on our goblet. Now we're going to get into the probabilities and combinations, and many people don't really understand them. It gets kind of weird, and it honestly took me an unnecessarily long time to figure out how to do them. It legitimately took me about 6 hours to figure it out, when in reality it should have only taken me 1. But first let's put into plain text what I was looking for. I had to find a way to calculate the chance of grabbing 3 desirable substats out of a pool of 4 desirable substats within a hand of 4 substats from a total pool of 9 substats. What this boils down to is we have to take the combination of 4 and 3 to find out how many different sets of desirable substats we can get from that pool of 4. Next, we have to multiply this by the number of ways the outlier substat can be chosen. Since 3 substats have to be desirable, this means we are left with 5 undesirable substats of which 1 must be chosen. So we do a combination of 5 and 1. 
But since we're looking for at least three desirable subsets, we also need to account for the amount of ways you can roll four desirable subsets, which is a combination of four and four multiplied by the combination of five and zero because you can't roll for an outlier subset if you don't choose one. Finally, we divide the entire value by the total number of possible four subset rolls, which is a combination of nine and four. Taking the combination of each of these gives us this much simpler looking formula. Essentially, we learned that there is 21 unique ways of rolling at least three desirable substats, while there is a total of 126 ways of rolling the nine different substats. We can then extrapolate this formula to find out the chances of getting those three or four desirable subsets for each artifact. So now, for just the right subsets, Flowers have a 1 out of 6 chance, Feathers have a 1 out of 21 chance, Time Base also has a 1 out of 21 chance, Goblet has a 25 out of 126 chance, and Heppies have a 1 out of 21 chance. Which means that the chance of you getting the right main set in at least three of the desired subsets is 1 out of 6, 1 out of 21, 1 out of 105, 25 out of 1386, 1 out of 147, or 2 out of 147 if you don't care about any crit rate or crit damage. Now, are you starting to see why I said it doesn't really matter if you couldn't decide between the two sets and you wanted both? In case you were wondering though, the chance of getting four specific subsets on any given artifact, not accounting for the right main set, is less than a percent. So unless you have nothing better to spend your residence on, you shouldn't be holding out and upgrading your artifacts that only have three good subsets, but I will be getting into this more later. But it doesn't end there yet. When you upgrade an artifact, every four levels, one of your subsets increases in level as well, chosen at random. And you don't want your outlier subset to be upgraded either. Not only that, every time a subset levels up, it can upgrade in different tiers. Now, I already went and did the math for the tiers and your chances of getting only a specific level of tier, but the majority of players aren't really looking to fully maximize their damage that way, since the benefit is incredibly small compared to the amount of effort required. So let's focus on the general upgrades. First, we have to find out the chance of upgrading just your desirable substats. Well, this is pretty easy, because every 5-star artifact is capable of hitting plus 20, which means that you can upgrade a substat a maximum of 5 times. Since we have 3 desirable substats, we just do 3 divided by 4 to the power of 5, or 23.73%. So, new chances of getting the given artifacts with the right main stat, 3 desirable substats, and only having those substats upgrade is, and this is where I switch to percentages because the actual fraction is too big, we now have 3.96%, 1.13%, 0.22%, 0.42%, 0 and 0.16%, or 0.32% for either stat. Now, I know people are going to ask why the goblet has a higher chance of being acquired than the timepiece or headpiece, so let me address that real quick. Since the timepiece and headpiece's ideal main set has a duplicate substat, this means that the chance of getting at least three desirable substats is much lower than the chance of getting a goblet with the right main stat, because now the timepiece and headpiece have only a three out of three. You cannot get any more desirable substats because there's only three left to choose from the pool. Now, these percentages are already pretty low, right? Well, it goes lower. After all, these are the values for each individual artifact type. We still have to account for actually rolling that particular artifact type, which just translates to multiplying each value by 1 divided by 5. Then we also have to account for getting a specific stat. Each domain has two different 5-star artifact sets, which means each value must then be multiplied by 1 divided by 2, with the exception of a goblet, since we're assuming that we're allowing a goblet to be from any set, though from the percentage we have now, perhaps it's better to get the timepiece or headpiece to be from any set. Now we have 0.396%, 0.113%, 0.0226%, 0.086%, 0.016%, and 0.032% for either stat on the headpiece. If we add all these values up, we can then find the aggregate chance of getting any of these artifacts on any given run, which is 0.633% or 0.649% if you're using either stat on the headpiece. If you didn't before, do you finally see why there's no real difference between the two types of headpieces? You're only getting an additional 0.016% chance. And now, We've hit the resting point. I know I've been speeding through the math pretty hard for this video, but honestly, it's just multiplication and probability. You don't really need to totally understand how it works. I've already explained as much as I can for it. If you really are interested in it, you might want to look up another video for it. Now, if you're joining us from the timestamp or you just scrolled through the video to this point, here are the Excel sheets that I used. This isn't an entire spreadsheet. The actual one is much larger, but this one gets all the important information out. Your chance of getting a specific artifact type with the right main stat, at least three or four desirable substats, and as part of the right set, is right here. If you don't care what substats get upgraded, just add up all these numbers for the aggregate chance of getting any of these artifacts on any given run. Essentially, you have an 8.33% chance of getting a good flower on any given run with the three substats that you like. Now, if you do care about which substats get upgraded, you'll have to use these values. This one tells you that you have a 1.98% chance of getting a good flower that only has its desirable substats upgrade. So if you have a flower with, say, crit rate, crit damage, and attack percent, and defense percent, and you only want the attack, crit rate, and crit damage to upgrade, then you only have a 1.98% chance. It's incredibly low, and it gets lower for the other artifacts, because flower, honestly, because it has HP on it, it removes one of the bad substats, so you have a much higher chance of getting good substats, and in return, you have a chance of only getting your good substats to upgrade. Now, down here is the aggregate chance of getting any artifact type with the right main set, at least three or four desirable subset, part of the right set, and only desirable subset leveling up. 
In case you can't tell what that says, it's a 0.633% chance. It's incredibly low, it's about the same as rolling a 5 star on your first run. And here's the problem. This is the best case scenario. Because this is assuming that you have zero good artifacts. Realize that as you acquire more artifacts, you're not going to need duplicates of those artifacts. Like, once you get a flower, you won't need another flower from that set with those specific stats. This then lowers your aggregate chance of getting a decent good artifact. And that follows for each artifact that you obtain. Your aggregate chance decreases until you're down to less than a percent chance. At the very best, assuming you get the other four artifact types, you have the best chance at getting a flower at 0.396%. And it's way harder to get the other four artifacts, so you have to be kind of unlucky in a way that you only get your feather, timepiece, goblet, and headpiece before you get the flower. Chances are you're going to get that flower first. And consider the fact that you need at the bare minimum two main DPS units for Spiral this. Well, you see where this is going, right? And yeah, that's pretty much it for all you casual players. If you only care about getting those three subsets, that's pretty much it. I have nothing more to add. But... What if, if you're not a casual player, say, and you're looking for four substats, what if you want each artifact you have to have the best possible substats? So this is going to be aimed at people who are casual, but you've already farmed for three or four desirable substats in all your artifacts. What if you want to go to the next step? If you're interested in that, stick around. If not, this is it. Also keep in mind that I'm going to be speeding back up again, so here we go. The first thing to know is that we can keep the base drop rates of these items main stats. Since we're only changing the number of desirable substats for each artifact, we have a slightly altered formula to use. As you can see, there's only one way to sort four desirable substats into four rows for any given artifact. For the goblet, we will be using a combination of 10 and 4 for the denominator instead of the 9 and 4, since the goblet's main stat doesn't replace any of the substats that we can get. As a result, we multiply each value by 1 divided by 126 for all artifacts except the goblet, which is multiplied by 1 divided by 210. Remember the whole less than a percent for four desirable substats thing I talked about way earlier? Well, now we multiply each of the main stat changes by the subset changes to get 1 divided by 126, 1 divided by 126, 1 divided by 630, 1 divided by 2310, and 1 divided by 882, or 1 divided by 442 if you don't care between crit rate or crit damage. Again, it doesn't really matter if you want crit rate, crit damage, or both on your headpiece. But then, we have to consider that the feather, timepiece, and headpiece will need energy resources after technical fourth desirable substat, and we don't really want that stat to increase, at least not in comparison to stats like flat attack, attack percent, crit rate, or crit damage. Would you rather have those upgrade or energy recharge? Typically, you want flat attack, or unless you're running a burst support DPS in Benny. This means we have to multiply those three artifact chances by the chance of upgrading three or four desirable substats, or just 23.73%, as derived in previous equations. This leaves us with, still that 1 divided by 126 for flowers, a 0.18% chance for feathers, a 0.038% for timepieces, still that 1 divided by 2310 for your goblet, and 0.027% for headpieces, or 0.054% if you don't care between crit rate or crit damage. Then we just multiply the values by the previously used values of 1 divided by 5 and 1 divided by 2, again excluding the set requirements for goblets. To get the final chance of getting your artifacts with the 4 good subsets is actually pretty much 0, I'm not going to read these numbers off because there are way too many zeros in them for me. If we take the aggregate chance of you getting any of these artifacts on any given run, we get a grand total of 0.11%. Let me repeat, 0.11%. You need to do 1,000 artifact runs at AR45 to get just one of these artifacts, and it's most likely going to be a flower. Every 1,000 runs, basically. And remember, as you get each desirable part, your aggregate chance of getting a desirable artifact decreases. Once you get that flower, you gotta take off that 0.079% right off the aggregate chance. If we're down to just one of these artifacts, let's go to worst case scenario here, your headpiece, you need to do an additional 10,000 runs on top of every other run that you've done just to get one perfect headpiece. One. A 0.0027% to get your artifact to have the right main stat and have four of the desirable substats. Again, with probabilities, since it's only 10,000 runs and there are 17 million downloads, there are going to be a good amount of people who have that perfect headpiece with those perfect substats. It's not impossible. Just that for any given person, for the average individual, you shouldn't be hoping, oh boy, I hope my headpiece has all four good substats. It's much more achievable to get three good substats rather than four. So like I said before, don't go farming for these perfect artifacts unless all your other characters are kitted out. It's not worth the resin or time to fret about. It's just not worth your energy. Now, if you do get one, congratulations, you got past one of the most grindiest aspects of the game. 
but chances are you're gonna have to do this multiple times because you're running about eight different characters because Abyss hurts. And yep, that's about it for artifact calculations. For the casual player, we're running at 0.633% chance for any of the good artifacts, decreasing with each good artifact. For you super hard bin maxers who really have too much time in their hands and really like grinding, you have a 0.11% chance of getting one of those super nice perfect artifacts. I also did a ton more math than I really actually needed to do. Like, again, I calculated the chances of only upgrading one stat every single time. Since I know there are some min-maxers out there who only want their crit stats to increase. Like, they're like, hey, I only want crit damage to increase because I'm already running at about 70% crit rate. So when they get a new artifact, they explicitly want crit damage to upgrade every single time. The numbers are for very, very low. You have to do 1 divided by 4 to the power of 5. Alright? That's your total chance. It's incredibly small. From the top of my head, that'd be 64 times 4, that's 200, it's 1 out of 256, so you're running at about a 0.05% chance. Yeah, yeah, so 0.5%, I believe, is what you'd be running at for every single artifact that had crit damage on it. I also calculated the chance of anyone getting only tier 4 upgrades, which is the highest possible tier on their substats. The, the math is more of the same, like you just multiply a lot of numbers together, but I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think anyone in the entire world has gotten an artifact that only has tier 4 upgrades. It's The number is some value times 10 to the negative 12. You're never getting an artifact like that. With 17 million downloads, there is no way anyone's gotten it. Even with every person in the world who's downloaded this game having gotten 5,000 5-star artifacts, I think I was still short by about 1,000 people, 1,000 more players to get this amount of artifact RNG in the right place. It's impossible. Don't ever hope uh, for it, ever. As a final note, I also wanted to bring up the assumption I made at the beginning of the video that all stats are equally distributed. As it is now, the theory that I heard states that the reason HP% percent and Defense% percent are so prevalent is because the offensive main stats are subcategorized, at least specifically in regards to goblets. Now, if we could get more data, that'd be great, but we're going to need hundreds of thousands of data points. We're going to need a lot of people to show the stat they got on their goblets, and frankly, it's a lot of work for any person. Like, you're going to have to tell us, like, the last 10, 20 goblets you got. So, I'm going to explain what this theory actually says. So, the theory states that all elemental and physical damage bonuses are lumped together and form one-fourth of all goblet main stats. I think there are a couple other stats that are stuck in there, like crit rate and crit damage, are all lumped in this one lot. Attack percent and elemental mastery take up about another one-fourth of it, while HP percent and defense percent both take up a quarter each. So, if we follow this theory, the chance of you getting a proper goblet, as in a goblet with your elemental damage bonus or your physical damage bonus, decreases to a chance of 1 divided by 28 instead of the 1 divided by 11. So, it almost triples, or not triples, takes a third of your chance of getting a good goblet, which would actually make it the reason why it's better to let your goblet not be the one that is part of a set because it's just so goddamn rare. Of course, this is all just hearsay, and there are actually no hard facts to prove or disprove this theory as of this video is making. Again, we don't have nearly enough data points. And yeah, I think I'm done talking now. I hope this video helped y'all, and I hope everyone has learned why so many YouTubers advise people not to farm artifacts until they hit AR45 because that's when you're guaranteed a 5-star artifact every run. Otherwise, you're wasting your time in resin. Yep. Thanks for watching.